Hi, welcome to Daniel Parsons Ministry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plan will be for the 28th of September. We're going to read Zechariah chapters 1 through 3, and in the New Testament, Luke chapter 11, the New King James Version of the Bible, Zechariah chapter 1, a call to repentance. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. And they, But they did not he hear nor heed me, says the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? Yet surely my words and my statues, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to us, according to our ways and according to our deeds, so he has dealt with us. Vision of the horses on the 24th day of the 11th month, which is the month Shebat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord and came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet. I saw by night, and behold, a man riding on a red horse, and it stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow, and behind him were horses, red, sorrel, and white. And I said, My Lord, what are these? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. So they answered the angel of the Lord who stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro throughout the earth, and behold, all the earth is resting quietly. The Lord will comfort Zion. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which you were angry these 70 years? And the Lord answered the angel who talked to me with good and comforting words. So the angel who spoke with me said to me, Proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease, for it was a little, for I was a little angry and they helped, but with evil intent. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Again proclaimed, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My city shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem, vision of the horns. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. And I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these? So he answered me, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Judah, Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen, and I said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are horns that scattered Judah so that no one could lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them, to cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. As I'm pulling up Zechariah 2, we go through the Old Testament once in a year's time and the New Testament twice in a year's time. Vision of the measuring line, Zechariah 2. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem to see what is its width and what is its length. And there was the angel who talked with me going out. And another angel was coming out to meet him who said to him, run, speak to this young man saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of man and livestock in it. For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her and I will be the glory in her midst. Future joy of Zion and many nations. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, escape, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you, for he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and they shall become my people, and I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you, 
and the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land, and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. Zechariah 3, as I'm getting that, um, we have hundreds of spiritual messages at DanielParsonsMinistry.com, and my wife, Patricia, is the gourmet chef, and she's got hundreds of really delicious vegan recipes. Just click the Healthy Living tab at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Please comment on your favorites. We enjoy interacting with you. Zechariah 3, Vision of the High Priest. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by, the, the coming branch. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house. And likewise, I have charge of my courts, and I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. So now as I get Luke chapter 11, we, uh, I appreciate it if you subscribe to my um, YouTube channel. Just search for Daniel Parsons Ministry on YouTube, and um, that helps me. I appreciate it. Luke 11, the model prayer. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our, our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. A friend comes at midnight, and he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Keep asking, seeking, knocking. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. And knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? A house divided cannot stand. And he was casting out a demon, and it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke, and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. Others, testing him, sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub, and if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from all 
from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. An unclean spirit returns. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first, keeping the word. And it happened as he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the woman womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. But he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it seeking a sign and while the crowds were thickly gathered together he began to say this is an evil generation it seeks a sign and no sign will be given to it except the sign of jonah the prophet for as jonah became a sign to the ninevites so also the son of man will be to this generation the queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with the man of this generation and condemn them for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of solomon and indeed a greater than solomon is here then the men, the men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here, the lamp of the body. No one who, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in the circuit place or under a basket, but on a lampstand. But those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. Woe to the Pharisees and lawyers. And as he spoke, a certain fairy, Pharisee asked him to dine with him. So he went in and sat down to eat. When the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees make the outside of the cup and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. Foolish ones, did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But rather give alms of such things as you have, and indeed all things are clean to you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass by justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without leaving others undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like graves at which are not seen, and the men who walk over them are not aware of them. Then one of the lawyers answered and said to him, Teacher, by saying these things, you reproach us also. And he said, Woe to you also, lawyers, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah who perished between the altar and the temple, yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in you hindered. And as he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to assail him vehemently and to cross-examine him about many things, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say that they might accuse him. That's the end of today's Bible reading. God bless you until we're together again. Bye for now.